This week, I want to talk about a story that I wrote with Trent Rosecrans, our Reds beat writer, one of our best the other day. And it was a story about the Reds' impending roster crunch with the arrival of one of the game's top prospects, Ellie De La Cruz, switch hitting shortstop, described to me by some Reds people as a switch hitting Tatis with upside. Think about that for a minute. The problem with Ellie De La Cruz joining the Reds, and it's one of these proverbial good problems to have, is that it might lead to the displacement of one of their best players, their heart and soul, their unquestioned leader, yes, even with Joey Votto on the team, and that player is Jonathan India. Jonathan India is their second baseman. He was the 2021 National League Rookie of the Year, and yet, just two years later, the Reds are so loaded with infielders, middle infielders in particular, that they have this situation developing where it might end up Ellie De La Cruz is at shortstop and Matt McClain, another one of their top prospects, is at second base. That would be probably the alignment that at second base would give them their best defense. India, good offensive player, not as good a defender as McClain at second base. So Trent and I combined on this story, kind of laying out all of the issues. Now, normally, when I write a story or a column, anything at all, I don't look at tweets in response, and I don't look at fan comments under the story, which we do in The Athletic. The reason for that is that fans have a different agenda than sports writers do. Fans worry about their team. They want writers, in many cases, not all, to kind of wave the pom-poms, tell them what they want to hear, and that's not our job. Also, I find in this day and age, reading comprehension is a real issue. Now, I don't know what's going on in schools today, but people are not always understanding what they're reading. And this story, which I thought was a relatively innocuous story about a fascinating situation with the Reds, an intriguing team that is playing better, that has this amazing prospect, and yet has this Roster crunch looming. Really interesting stuff about a team that's been down for a few years. Well, this story got some fan reaction that kind of boggled my mind, for lack of a better term. Some people said we were overthinking it. Uh, no, the Reds are thinking about this quite a bit right now. Some people accused us of clickbait. No, The Athletic is a subscription site, and you can't have clickbait on a subscription site. You either click if you're a subscriber or you don't. And then finally... There was a tweet from ESPN's Kirk Herbstreet. Now, Kirk is, of course, big-time announcer, legendary guy, and he writes, This team hasn't had a leader that pushed his teammates every day since Scott Rowland left in 2012, and we finally have that guy, and you write this article? India's value goes far beyond the numbers. As excited as we all are about the young talent coming up, India needs to be the rock and catalyst for years to come, put De La Cruz in the outfield, and move on. Well, I certainly appreciate all reader comments, and it's all part of it. People can say what they want to say, including Kirk, who, of course, is in the media and has somewhat of a more valid opinion than some would. At the same time, I would suggest Kirk read the article again. And I would suggest everyone who is rising up in defense of Jonathan India to read the article again. Because the article, which was mostly written by Trent, deals with the fact that India has extreme value to this team, both on and off the field. And for that reason, while it would be easy to trade him from a pure numbers perspective, it's really difficult to trade him because of what he means to the club. Now, I talked to Jonathan India about this whole situation this weekend in Chicago. He's quite aware of what's going on. His reaction was just fine. He basically said, listen, there are always guys coming up behind you in this game. Always. And what I have to do is just focus on what I can focus on. Helping my team win, playing the best I can, making the decision as tough as I can for them. So, I would advise, again, people who read the article and didn't understand that it really quite delicately and carefully outlined what Jonathan India means to this team, yeah, he means a ton to this team. And that's why this is such a quandary for the Reds. Yes, they're thinking about it. Their GM's thinking about it. Their manager's thinking about it. Their coaches are thinking about it. They're trying to figure this out. Now, you can say, move Jonathan India to left field. Move him to third base. But at third base, the Reds have 
other players. Nick Senzel's playing well there now. Christian Encarnacion Strand, another top prospect, he's coming. Now, he ultimately might be a DH, and you can use India at the DH spot as well, but it might be that you need Christian Encarnacion Strand there, and you might want Senzel at third. India at third base, his arm might be a little short. Same in left field. His arm might be short there. So there's no obvious spot to move Jonathan India. Now, Kirk Herbstreet suggested Dela Cruz to the outfield. Center field, maybe, right? Here's a guy who's a tremendous athlete, and I'm sure he could handle it, much like Tatis has with San Diego. But at least right now, the Reds still view him as a shortstop. And really, the way he's playing, you have to promote him probably within the next few weeks, if not sooner. And you're not going to have a position switch in the middle of a season. So there are all these things in play, including Spencer Steer at first base, who has proven himself to be a pretty good player for them, a Rookie of the Year candidate, kind of in a stealth way. Maybe you move him to the outfield. You've got Votto possibly coming back. You've got all of these balls up in the air. And this is why we studied this, analyzed it, wrote about it. Because it's a really interesting situation. It's not going away anytime soon. Once Ellie Dela Cruz gets here, and he's getting here soon, it's going to be a real thing.